really the kids, because we ask hard questions individually to ourselves in each category, uh, along with having them ask themselves these questions. Uh, so for them to lean in and be willing to kind of confess the the things that nobody wants to talk about, you know, the areas that you know you have to grow in at 9, 12, and 16, I was loving the ability to be self-aware enough to answer that honestly. Hmm. Uh, so, you know, funny example was I remember Lincoln talking about he needs to help more. And, you know, we asked him to expand on that. What does help more mean? Uh, he gave a, a really basic answer at first. And then Adeline, I think, looked at him and goes, why don't you try a little harder? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, if you're going to do this, yeah. let me push you. Why don't you be so on? Because the girls had gone first and they had given some some great responses that were, you know, something we're all, we all are seeing. And um, so it was just funny to even have enough trust in the room to be called out to another level. And The youngest child. <laughs> I should help more. I, I, I should I think that all young I should get over my reality <laughs> that the world revolves around me and is here to serve me. Yeah, I love... There's a guy, I can't remember his name, I follow him on Instagram, but he does these reenactments of what the oldest child would do, <laughs> yeah. what the middle child would do, and what the youngest child would do. And I, the last one was the teacher, parent-teacher conference, and oldest child, you know, straight A's, so respectful, so responsible. The middle child was, you know, they're always late, and they always have drawings and cartoons on them, and it doesn't always make sense. I don't feel like they're fully listening to what I'm saying. And and then the, the last child is... They sent me to the principal's office. Your child sent me to the principal's <laughs> office because they said I wasn't doing a good enough job. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like this funny perspective of the youngest child and oldest child, middle child. But it is, I think the whole point of the SWAT is bringing more and more self-awareness to our family mm-hmm. and calling out you know, our greatnesses, encouraging each other in our those truths and partnering with, okay, what are the weaknesses that you have that are impacting us all. And that's one of the ways that we really looked at it is is really what's something that all of us are being affected by this Mm -hmm. that we, we want to grow out of. Um, so the first one really is the strengths. That's the S that's what the S stands for. And, uh, what is this, the strength of your family, which great ways to do this is, you know, what, what is the strength that I bring to this family? Mm -hmm. That was probably my favorite question that we asked, um, and I, when we've done this with families, that's one of the hardest ones for people to answer. You know why? <laughs> you please tell me. Oh, I just think it's so, you know, encouragement mm-hmm. is so underused in family systems. You know, yeah. we, the, the idea of being overtly prophetic, encouraging, mm-hmm. edifying, mm-hmm to one another, calling out the greatness in each other as family members is, it's risky because we think, oh, well, that means you don't, you don't have anything to work on. That means you think that, I don't think that I want you to fix all this broken stuff. So I'm not going to take off the pressure by feeding you some compliments, you know? And so a whole family having to realign themselves as soon as they start thinking about their strengths. Yeah. It, it was really fun uh, just to have them. It wasn't hard. I would say it wasn't too hard for us to answer that question because I think we've built a culture of, of really encouraging and loving each other and protecting that. And that's, you know, we are edifying one another often. Uh, the, the please and thank yous in our house overflow, which I, I love. I, mm. I couldn't be it's more thankful amazing. for that. It, it, every time I come home from Taekwondo, driving my son there, he's always like, thank you. I'm like, you're welcome for taking you to the thing that I'm paying for that you are ready for 15 minutes early before we ever have to leave. Like, okay, you're, you're so welcome. I don't know why you're sell- telling me thank you, but I love that you do. Yeah. And um, so this, this place of gratitude is easy for us to access, which I think is why it was easy for us to find some strengths. But If it's a hard place for you to lean into, uh, a good question is really to assess why is this hard for our family? And is it, you know, are we, are we not practicing encouraging one another on a regular basis? And it might be easier to get 
each other calling out the strengths in each other. Because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it can be a scary thing to go, you know what I rock at in this family? <laughs> Let me tell you what I rock at in the this youngest family. Child <laughs> yeah, the youngest child will come right out with it. Everybody else will be like, oh, <laughs> I'm not perfect at this, so I better not say anything. But when you, you say, you know what, you are really encouraging. Mm-hmm. You you do encourage us probably more than any of our other family members. You you get yeah, the encouragement award, you know, and you you serve. Mm-hmm. I mean, you always want to help. You always you know, that might get it going is let each other call out and and remember that we actually can do it. Mm-hmm. And I would strongly suggest that you are writing these things down. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, whether someone's taking notes or something like that, because the the point of a, a SWOT analysis is not to just do it and never look at it again. Mm-hmm. It's actually to review it few times and see okay what have we actually tackled what have we grown in um what are we still stuck on so make sure you're doing that how did we use our strengths for the benefit of this unit Mm -hmm. exactly Mm -hmm. which is great i love the you know kind of leaning into calling out in each other that's a great place to practice for sure um and then really honoring you know maybe that's something that you you put on your refrigerator for a little while everyone's strengths so it's it is a confidence builder. The the more when I see my kids be able to call out what they're good at, and not in a place of arrogance, but in a, in a place of um, confidence. confidence, it is so different in in their abilities when they walk in a, a room, or when they face struggle, or when they face uncertainties or insecurities. When they've got a storehouse of I know who I am because I've been built up in who the Lord says I am, and I've been in an environment that reinforces that, it's easier for them to find. doesn't mean there's not insecurities yeah. that we all have to fa- it, figure out. It's like, it's like you, have, you know, your kid can walk into any room with 100 bucks in their pocket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. That's yeah. a great, great example. And, I, and then not be tempted to, to, guess, to spend it on something that's worthless. Yeah. It's like if, if, if this is needed, I can help. Yeah. I have strength to add. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's great. 